Hi, it's Stefan here from the BMW DIY Guy. Today we're going to be working with the Avon USA 10 and a quarter inch touchscreen upgrade for the BMW F32, in this case a 2014 435. This looks like a really fun project and a great upgrade for your car. Let's get started. A disclaimer before we get started. Always work slowly and carefully. Never put tools in your pocket when you get in and out of the car. You'll see me change tools, take new approaches, and do the best effort that I can. There's no warranty on this work, and this is in best faith and effort as we go forward. Never hesitate to ask questions, and always ask for help. Okay, here we are out in the car. Today's example is a 2014 435, so that's an F32. Though this model from Avon will work for pretty much almost all of the F3 series. So 30, 31, 32, and so on. But today is an F32. As you can see from the display, it's a pretty substantial change. So not only touchscreen, all the additional advantages, but just in the display screen size difference. So let's get started. Okay, so let's get started. You'll also know that I'll be taking pictures as we go through this process. I have a companion DIY guide to go along with the videos. Some folks would prefer a printout and can actually get it dirty and work with their hands on, or some would like a video. So don't be surprised if you see me doing that as we go through. First thing we're gonna do is pull this dash piece off. Be very gentle, but surprisingly, it just comes right out. I'm always a little nervous of this trim piece down here at the end, so make sure to reach down and pull it all out. As you can see, it's out. Now normally, when I've changed some of the trim pieces and done other things with this, I'll actually just keep this piece in place. You can see in this case, that's really not gonna work because we need to be able to get to the cables and components here underneath. Though I'm tempted to just leave it out. But in this case, I think we'll, uh, we'll take it off. So we have one wire, wire bundle here. We have another wire bundle in the back that are a little bit difficult to get to. Get to. You can see there's a little clip here. And you can see this wire bundle here and here. So as we go through this, you just want to be really careful that you don't break any of this. This is not a cheap piece to replace. So as always, be careful. Wires are pretty snug. All right. So in this case, I'm just gonna leave it be right there for right now. Let's see what we have for screws. So it looks like we've got hex bolts that are sitting back in the back for the display. So I have a nice multi-tool screwdriver with lots of bits. You'll find that BMW uses a lot of different sizes. T20 is really, really common. So let's start with that. You've got a bolt here and here. And did I guess properly? I did. That appears to be a T20. All right, so taking photos for the guide as we move forward. Always be careful you're not scratching up your dash. I'm really careful with that right at the moment. I normally would have a towel I'd put over the top of my controls right there. And uh, so don't be surprised if you see me get one in a here in a few minutes. All right, so first bolt is out. The first screw. The other thing that's kind of nice is if you have a tool that's magnetic, I just got to be careful where you put magnetic tools, but it's kind of nice for being able to get parts out. I also have a magnetic bowl that I use very commonly to help keep track of things and I don't lose parts. Now, I will say what's kind of ironic with the magnetic bowl over time is that with all the work that I've done, I've ended up with some extras. <laughs> I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing in this case. All right, so I really feel like this piece is in the way and I would like to remove it if possible. So 
So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pause the video for a second, and I'm going to go get a towel so to protect my controls. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. So you can see I've got a towel in place to help, con help protect the stereo controls. So this cable is out. Uh, I grabbed it with both hands. I grabbed one piece here and another piece here and pulled firmly. It was in pretty tight, so be careful with that. The second one, because there's two cables connecting this trim piece, the second one I just backed back out as well, trying to apply, you know, even but careful pressure. And as you can see, it's come right out. So now this trim piece is out and free, and we don't have to worry about either banging up the dash or uh, potentially damaging that piece. So I'm just going to tuck these cables back out of the way, get them out of the way, and then we'll get that second bolt as soon as we're good to go here. Okay, so let's get that second one out. Now, ironically enough, I've still forgotten my magnetic screw bowl, so at some point, i get a pause in video, I'll go get it. So everything that appears for this display appears to be really held down by really just these two screws. So let's get the second one out. I'm always really careful trying not to drop things because that way they drop into the dash and disappear. You can always find replacements for things. There's some really great, great retailers out there if you do drop something or break something. But let's, let's avoid that if we can. Yeah, as you can see, this one, it's the same. T20 Torx, but it just does not want to come out this last little bit. Okay, and almost dropped it back into the vent. So let's not do that. There we go. All right, so that's now out too. So in theory, this display should be loose, and it is. Okay, so as you can see, it's loose. We've got connectors in the back, really what appears to be just really just one cable that runs down let's tuck these back and out of the way there we go there really is just one cable that runs down right here we'll route this up here in front to maybe get a little bit more slack in it and you see it's now loose and the display is now loose so we take this, it just pulls straight up. And there, it's up and out. So now what we really need to do is be able to get enough cable to get this loose. So this is the first time I've installed one of these. So we get to learn together as we go on how much cable we have. And there's a, a fair amount down there. But again, I'm only applying kind of medium pressure. I, as I said, sometimes you'll even see me break things. Hopefully if I break something, that means you won't. In this case, let's not break something. Okay, so I think I've got about as much slack out of that cable as I'm gonna get. So it's possible for me to pull the trim here and here and here, which I've done before for another upgrade but I really don't think that's necessary. It really appears that if I can work this up and out and get this turned around without banging up the dash, I can get to the plug and there we go. So it looks like we've got two plugs. We've got this top plug right here. We've got two plugs. We've got this round circular plug and then in addition, the secondary main cable, which appears to be an optical cable. So, let's work these out, shall we? Now, in this case, I really don't want to break anything. So, what I don't know is how much pressure it takes to take these cables out. So, as we look at the original display, you can see, here's the same cable. So, you can see there's the same cable connection here with the same secondary plug up here. And this would be for a GPS antenna that's included with the device. So we want to make sure that we get good connectivity here. So it appears that this top cable is separate from 
what is very likely an optical cable. So I'm going to try to pull that top cable first because it appears that it should come out first. Give me a little extra light as we go here just to make sure. Yeah, it would definitely appear that it's a secondary cable. And yeah, at times you'll get to look at the back of my head. Sorry. Okay, so the question is, is what is it going to take to get this little extra bit out here? There's a depression tab, which BMW uses all the time to keep their, their cables in. And then we can also look and see if we learn anything from the new one. So as you can see from the new one, hopefully pretty clearly here on the video, you can see that there's this main inner plug. There's the little depression tab right there, which is what I was just pulling on. And then there's this upper plug as well. So I think it's a matter of just with most of the most things, just enough general pressure to get that plug out. Again, the last thing we want to do is break anything because it appears that that guy right there should let this plug go and the plug should walk back. So while I do this, I'm going to pause again for a second. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. And yes, sometimes it's good to have the right tools. Um, what I've done in this case is I have a plastic trim tool, which I've used extensively, and I strongly recommend having them available for any time you're doing work around in your car. That way, if you have to apply gentle pressure, pry on something, you're not doing it with a metal tool. What I did in this case was I slid it underneath this connector because I couldn't seem to apply enough force with my fingers. And I've depressed the little switch here, uh, the little tab here, and pried gently outwards. As you can see, the plug came off. I really feel like that's probably the best way to get this off is gentle pressure out this way to get that plug to come out. Because this way, if you have your fingers on it, you're pulling on the cabling, you're pulling on the connection. Not a big fan of that. To me, that feels like a really good way to, uh, to break connectors. And I've certainly done that before. I wish I could say that that wasn't the case. All right, so you can see the display is out. Really not too hard. When it comes down to it, you pull one vent piece, you pull two screws, and a uh, little bit of cable slack, and the display is out. All right, the other thing I've done, just in case you notice, is I, again, I've made sure that the dash is covered, and care so I'm careful with that. From time to time, if you see the back of my head, I've got a headlamp on. It actually works fairly well. I'm a big fan of a headlamp while working on my car, because that way both hands can be free and I can do the work I need to do, and I can still get a decent amount of light. Okay, so as, you, as we look at this, you can see that the display is out. It's really quite simple. There's the hooks that sit back behind. The new display just has the same tabs that the screws will go into, the same connection, and then a USB, or <laughs> sorry, a GPS connection for the antenna. So I have the antenna right here. As you can see, we have the antenna with an adhesive pad on the back and the connection. Now your car may have GPS already. It may have that connectivity already. But for those of you that don't, this definitely gives that functionality and actually gives that additional function. So I'll, I'll pull my towel for here for a minute. So I've worked on other BMW models with uh, other Avon units. And so what I will usually do is I will attach the GPS receiver, usually to the metal frame, which in this case with the F32, you can see it's back behind the dash right here. We've got some metal piping. This is a magnetic or has a, has a magnet on it. So it will stick down well. So let's just make sure we'll stick it back here. And <laughs> as I said in my intro video, from time to time you'll see me actually make mistakes. So in this mistake, in this case, this one does not have a magnet on it. Previous models I've, I've used do. So in this case, it appears to just be adhesive. So there's lots of options of where one could stick this. We'll probably shoot for the inside edge of this inside edge of the dash right here, and then we'll route the cabling around around the AC vents as well. So 
as we take a look at this, now's a good time to make sure that the rest of your dash is clean. Is there anything else you need to do while you're here? So we'll route the GPS unit around, around the dash. We'll probably coil the extra cables down into this, into this empty space. And uh, we'll get the unit installed here really, really quickly. All right, I will be right back. Okay, so I didn't figure you didn't want to watch me struggling with adhesive, right? So let's take the antenna and we're going to put the GPS antenna up nice and high here where it should have good visibility. But there's all open space here. And I'm just going to apply it with my fingers up against the inside. Ah, there we go, of the dash. So obviously I've got lots of extra cabling here. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to coil down and away from the vents so it doesn't have any issues when we reinstall the vents. Also keep in mind that if you, when you're dealing with this optical cable to come up to your display, that at one point I pulled it out in front of the vents to get a little bit more space so I could turn the display around. Make sure that when you put everything back together, that, that cable is back in the right place. All right, so I think I've got enough cable routed through here. Obviously this is gonna have to come back and route up through the same hole as the optical cable. I'll pull it out here in front just so you can see it like that, which is good. So now we've got our optical cable in place. We've got our data cable for the GPS ready to go and everything should be in place. So as we look at the display, you can see that we have the existing cable connection here, which is the exact same thing. We'll just press it in and snap it into place. We've got the GPS antenna here, which we'll just screw in and snap into place. So we're pretty much good to go. So we'll carefully attach this all together. So that's the GPS antenna, nice and firmly. And I'm going to route some of that extra cable out now so we don't have to struggle as we turn the display around and get it out of the way and push back into this open space in the dash. Make sure it doesn't hang up on anything. And again, work slowly and carefully. So we have that set there. We have the display cable, which will come up and clearances are fairly tight. So we'll take that, make sure it's lined up nice and neat, and just walk it straight into place. So it doesn't, there was not a clear pop of the tab going into place, but the tab itself kind of moved into a forward position. So you can tell that it was fully engaged by that locking piece on the barrel of the plug. So that should be all good to go. Okay, so I'm back. All right, so as you can see, the optical cable is, is connected and the GPS cable is connected. What we're also looking at right now is the data cable up for the device, which is here, and needs to be routed back down for the CAN bus ha uh, wiring back behind the dash and back behind your, your existing stereo unit so your, all your controls and everything else work. You've got more T20 screws right here at the top of your trim. Now, I'll mention it now just because it's a little bit different. If you have a pre-model refresh car, you won't have lighting in this trim piece. If you have an LCI, which is the model refresh, you will. Now, the 2014 F32 is pre-LCI, but I've actually added that lighted trim piece. So for the, for the detailed kids, don't be surprised if you see something that isn't quite standard. Now this lower trim piece just pops clean off. You just press with your fingers and it comes out. Now you'll see the extra wiring connection that I have here for me adding in that extra piece. So if you see that or don't see that, there's, that's the reasons why. Don't be surprised by it. Uh, I will say that if you, if you are a pre-LCI, 
I recommend it. It's a very simple thing to do. It's a very simple piece to add. And I personally think it looks absolutely fantastic. So I'll take out, I took out the upper pieces. I pulled off that lower trim piece and I'll pull out these two lowers as well. Because what we need to get to is we need to get to the wiring harness for the dash. So we can get the CAN bus controls working. Okay, so I'll pull both of those. Both of those are out. Again, I'm always very careful not to put tools on my seats if I can help it. So this piece just pulls straight off. Now, you can see there's a lot of extra, of extra wiring that you, that you can get here. There's an easy connector right here. And that will just pull the trim piece up and out of the way, which I would recommend doing. Again, for the sole purpose that you don't scratch anything, you're not going to beat anything up, this plug just walks right back out. So now this trim piece is out of the way. Now I've got these extra wires because the trim has the lighting on it. The wires are long enough in my case that I can just take them and pull them out of the way. Worst case scenario, I can also unplug them right here as well. So now you'll see here is the stereo. So in my case, I'm looking at the Harman model. So I've got one, two, three, four more Torx screws. So we'll pull those out as we go. So we can get to get to all of the uh, stereo, stereo wiring and cam bus controls. Sorry about the road, road noise. And again, it looks like we're, t we're T20 through all of this. Now, the one thing that I've noticed as we go through, it appears, so as we pull that out, and drop it, and we'll pull the next one out, that they've used the same sizes on everything all the way through. Now the one I just dropped, we'll, well I'll catch in a second. That's why I'm a big fan of uh, having a little magnet on a remote. So as you look through all of the bolts thus far, so you can see them here in my hand, they're all the same size. So this one, this one, these four, these two up here, have all been exactly identical. So you really don't have to worry about which ones you're using as you go through it. So you don't have to worry about making sure very specifically these two go here and these go back here. They'll just all come as is. I'm always really careful to put to make sure that you use the right screws and forgive me. And again, this is garage DIY. They're probably not bolts, right? There's probably somebody out there going, they're screws, man, they're screws. Well, they, they are. But whether I use the exact right name all the time or not, personally, I don't think really matters. But in this case, they're all matching. I am very circumspect to make sure that I try to put the right things back where they came from. And in this case, it doesn't appear that it matters. So the one will drop, I dropped. I'll go back and get a, get, get a little bit later. So all four of those come out and then this should pull straight out. So this is really quite a big monster box, as you can see it. It's also really heavy. Well, relatively heavy for its size. Last thing I want to do again is bang up anything that I'm working with. So we definitely have some really tight cabling as we work through here. And what I'm looking for is the correct wiring harness. So we'll get that straightened out. Okay, so I've laid the box on its side, again on a towel, because I don't want to scratch up my interior trim. And there's a large black box connector on the back. So when it's on its side, or you reach underneath, you'll see that there's a horseshoe collar right here. If you pry that collar gently backwards, it unlocks the plug, and also backs the plug out of its connection. So as we look at the wiring harness provided, you'll see that we have the connectors, the connector that will go up to the display up here that will feed up here in a moment. We'll feed this up and around and up, in, up into so it can connect. We've got a female adapter. So to plug this existing wiring harness in here and it'll lock in together. And then we've got the new that will lock back into the rest of the electronics. So a lot of this really is dealing with clean 
uh, wire maintenance and really taking care of your wires. So in this case, I'm gonna feed this in. I would probably recommend, depending on how, how you connect all of this, as you look at it, you, see, you can see that they're all labeled very well, parking, camera, and so on. You see lots of extra connectors here for video feeds. So you can see camera, video out. Okay, so you can see all these extra, extra connectors. I'm a big fan of, made, of really clean installations, so I probably recommend you know, taping these bundles down, making sure that it's nice and clean as you come up through the dash. So while I still have the room to reach around back here, I'm gonna do that first. So as neat and clean as I can, now there's a couple of there's a couple of openings here, as you can see, directly underneath your vents. So this is where you come between this opening in, in, in the frame back here up through the vent. Now I'm probably gonna pick this one here on the left. You could probably pick the one on the right. I'm gonna go with the one on the left just because it feels like there's less cables there to begin with. So I'm gonna take this and feed it back in and up through. Again, slowly, carefully, don't ding up the wires, don't ding up your wiring. You wanna make sure that you do this as neat and clean as possible. You also want, are gonna to wanna to feed a lot of this back down into this open space back when you're done. So you need to feed it through there and you're also gonna to need to feed it through this hole in the upper section of the dash as well. Now in retrospect, as you can see, and I'll, you'll probably see me do here in a minute, I'll probably lay a towel back here as well. Cause I just realized that as this is sitting here, I think it's okay but we've got some pressure where it's really laying against those posts that the display is supposed to sit on. Last thing I'd wanna do is scratch my screen. Can you imagine buying one of these, getting through your install and scratching your screen? So I'm gonna go get a towel. Okay, so I'm back. I have a towel laid down, so just avoid the possibility of scratching the screen. I've also taken this opportunity to, to work this plug up through the hole in the upper dash. Um, sometimes people complain about having small hands. Um, I don't. And there are times that I wish I did when working on cars, let me, let me tell you. Okay, so all of this is set. I'm gonna plug this in now because we're gonna have to feed this cabling back in and around. And I, my feeling is, is that if we get this plugged in now, and then the monitor, or the, excuse me, the screen back in place, that I think that's probably a better way to approach this. The other thing I'm gonna do is I also noticed that I've got a little bit of a tangle in this cable. So I don't like the way that's sitting. So I'm gonna take the GPS cable and untangle it to make sure that it doesn't get bound up or wound up as we try to back all these cables back out. So I've got our Cable from the CAN bus adapter. This looks like a fairly tight fit to get in. Yeah, it looks like a very tight fit. So this may be a bit of a challenge to get this plug in and around this corner. So yeah, it can definitely be done, but it's be gentle when you do that. It's also got a little pressure tab on it. So I'd make sure that this plug gets in all the way firmly it doesn't come back out and it's definitely all the way back in very firmly which is good so that connection is all set i'm also going to take this opportunity and i'm going to turn the screen back around and get it back in the right place because that way as i set all my cables back into my space i'll know my, my cables are in the right place i've got the right length set up because there's definitely some cable management here that you need to deal with and so I'm always a big fan of making sure that that's taken care of in a very clean fashion. So let's get all of this plugged back in and around. And we'll turn this back into place. So turn that back around. Make sure that your cables aren't twisting badly or you have anything bound up. Again, I'm going to walk that USB plug back down and through. Now, I will take this opportunity to say that if you notice, I had the screen in earlier, and then here we are installing the data cable and the CAN bus adapter, and the screen is back out. <laughs> well, if you have an attention to detail, if you notice, it's because I got the screen back in and I was so excited to get the screen in 
that I forgot about the data cable that needs to be attached for the CAN bus. So if you're like, hey, wait a minute, that logically didn't make sense. Well, you'll understand why. So forgive me my enthusiasm. And again, I'm an amateur at this. I'm a guy writing DIY videos or DIY guides because I think we can all do it. So you'll see me make mistakes every once in a while. You'll see me have to change something, change tools. Okay, so the display is in place. I'm not gonna screw it in right now. All of my cables are down in, in, in neat order. I've got all of my additional cables down. Everything else is down. And my vents are clear, which is good. So I don't have to worry about that later. Okay, so I'm going to connect. Again, so this is the original wiring harness plug. And this is that Y adapter to give us all the additional connectivity, all the other functions and everything that we're going to be dealing with. So we, this only, can only go one way. And again, you've got this collar. So you walk that collar back, you put the plug in and walk the collar forward. And apparently we have power because my... Okay, so I've pulled the camera because I wanted to give a closer look to actually show one additional thing that needs to be done that isn't really clear and you wouldn't have been able to see from the other camera position. You'll see these two cables right here. And this is the original wiring harness that comes off of the back of your head unit. These are the optical cables that need to be pulled out of here and then added into here. And you can see right where they'll go in right there once they come out of here, there's a small little pressure tab that you'll pry upwards and the plug will slide out. It is not these little blue horseshoe collars that BMW usually uses to hold their cabling in. There's just a little pressure clip that you'll need to press up a little bit and this plug will slide out and then you'll slide it into the other one. If you don't do that, then you're going to have uh, issues with your radio and issues with sound. It won't work. So definitely make sure to do that and uh, transfer that wiring so it'll work. So the other thing I want to add as we do this here, if you notice a second ago, there was that cloth wiring wrap that BMW uses along this cable, this cable bundle where I'm pulling out the optical connectors here. There is not enough cable length to be able to plug this into the new plug and keep it in this wiring harness or in this wiring wrap, excuse me. So I very carefully cut that cloth wrap off. I've, I've used a little bit of electrical tape to keep this wiring bundle together. That cloth wrap is great. I think it uh, does a really, really good job. But it's very difficult to unwrap because of the adhesive on it. I'm actually thinking about buying some someday so I can rewrap it. So if I have to rewrap things like this, I can use the, that original kind of cloth fuzzy, fuzzy material that they use because not only does it protect your wiring, but it actually will slide. It's kind of got a felt feeling to it, which is really, really nice. I don't have any at the moment, but I did have to cut this to get some additional cable. So to allow this optical cable to fit. The other thing that I want to stress is make sure that you get the correct orientation when you put it in. So when you look at this cable, you can see how it's set up here. Make sure when you pull it from this harness and you put it into the new one, and in this case, it was, as you can see, in this orientation where the clip is here, the little pressure clip is here, it was black and then green in this orientation. Make sure that when you put it into the new harness that it's in the exact same orientation. Now, in theory, it should only go in one way, but you never know. So just make sure you don't put it in backwards. Okay, forgive the unplanned break there. Um, ironically enough, the battery died. Again, <laughs> this is not, not a professional production. All right, so as you can see, I've got the display on now with the connection here. And we need to walk the plug it's in the down position, so again, that collar needs to be pushed back. We'll walk it into the other plug. There's really only one way it can go. And there's a lot of cables on the back of this box. So it's really kind of a matter of working around all of those cables 
and getting it in to the right place and then walking that collar forward to get it to lock in. And there are so many cables on the back of this, of this box that it's a little tight to work with, but I'm sure that we'll get it in. There we go. So it just kind of snaps into place and then the collar locks down just like that. So now the adapter is in, the display is connected. Now we have a lot of extra cables here for auxiliary inputs, USB inputs, you name it. We're not gonna deal with those today. We're gonna deal with primarily with getting the display into place. And then there's a lot of additional things you can add from there. Auxiliary connections, videos in and out, forward facing cameras. Um, I have the backup camera in this car, but there are a lot of additions you can add in. So at this point, we're not gonna do that. So now it's about cable management and getting this back into place without dinging up the dash, without causing any issues and getting it all back into space. Now, when you look at this open space back behind, you'll see that there's a lot of space in the lower section. So I'm gonna try to route all of those cables into that lower section because we definitely have some additions that, that were not there before. Now, I've got no concerns that it's gonna fit. It's just a matter of whether it's gonna fit in a neat fashion and not get in the way. The other thing, again, I strongly recommend is good cable management. So if you're not going to be using any of these additional connectors, if you're not going to be adding in a lot of these things, I would recommend tying them off neatly and getting them put away in a good clean place where they're not going to be in the way. Like I said, we're not going to address those today, so I'm just going to tuck them out of the way. So as I walk this in, I'm actually going to see from looking at the space, this big daughter adapter, I'm going to walk downward into that open space and then walk it back in. So you can see in this case, it doesn't want, it doesn't want to finish going all the rest of the way in. So those cables are definitely in the way. So I'm going to continue to try to walk those cables down and out into the lower sections to get them out of the way so it can slide back into place. Obviously, their clearances are pretty tight. So we're looking at something where, you know, we're adding a lot of cables. <clears throat> so adding a lot of cables generally means that you gotta make sure that they all fit into the right places. And I'm still a little too tight. So let's keep patiently, consistently, getting this back into the right spots. So down and probably right feels like the, the right direction to go with all of this cabling and this plug back here is pretty big so if it sits directly behind the device it's not going to be in a good place and that I think that may be the challenge that we're going to deal with on how to get that walked back into a place where it's out of the way because it really wants to stay in that one spot directly back behind it. So this gets to be your challenge as you go through this. And again, I mentioned earlier about sometimes it'd be nice to have small hands. This definitely would be one of those moments. I don't know if maybe if I use one of my tools, I can help reach back in like maybe one of my trim tools help press down on that piece as it goes in. That might help as we go because it just wants to be trouble. And again, I've, there's enough cables back here, especially you've added enough that you really want to be careful as you do this. Last thing you want to do is beat up a cable. Oh, we're almost there. As you can see, almost. We've got about half inch to go so it's going well because we're over the guide posts we've just got a little bit of gap left here and that's the last thing we want to do is not have this fit back together one of the things that I appreciate about Avon is they do such a good job in their design that once you're done there we go the cable worked back a little bit 
So now our posts are all in. We've got, we've eliminated our gap and we're all back in the right place. One of the things I appreciate about Avon and the hard work that they do in design is that when you're done, they do it right. It doesn't look like you've put in this huge change. It doesn't look like you've put in some really garish aftermarket device. So I believe that our cables are in a good place. So I'm gonna go ahead and secure the deck. I've got a little bit of pressure from the cables pushing back. That's okay. These are plastic. The bolts, <laughs> screws, excuse me, are metal. The frame that you're screwing into is plastic. So just firm pressure. Never over tighten these because uh, you can easily strip these out. One, two, three, four, and we're still dealing with a Torx 20. We're still dealing with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, technically, of these, and they all appear to be identical. So I'm not putting any work into which ones went exactly where. And also always make sure to put these in straight, because again, if you're, you're, if you're putting metal into plastic, you can strip them out really, really easily. So we've got the four screws keeping the head unit in. We've got one, two, three, four, keeping the trim on. We've got two in for the display. So I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the screws in for the display now. I feel like we shouldn't have any more changes that way. So I mentioned these are nylon. You can see that these are going into nylon, which is great for vibration and avoiding squeaks and noises, but will strip in a heartbeat. So and usually at the moment where you're like, I'll just go a little tighter and bang, it'll strip out. So just firm with these. I've certainly done that. I've certainly gone a half a turn further on a tool than I should have. And I really regret it. And I end up having to replace it, fix it, do something about it. Try to avoid that as best you can. Okay, so the head unit is secure. The display is secure. I've already got my first fingerprints on the display. <laughs> first of many, of course. And we will be good to go here in just a minute. And like I said earlier, with this being a touchscreen display, this is not Gorilla Glass or something similar. So I think putting that towel over the post when we were doing the install was the right idea to help protect the display. Okay, so here is, again, the trim piece. You may or may not have some of these extra cables here. You may just have a cable that comes to this lower trim piece if you're pre-LCI. If, if you are post-LCI, then you'll have the lighted trim piece. In this case, we're both because this is a pre-LCI 4 Series. And I've got the LCI piece on it just because I think it looks good. So I'll feed this back into place. There's a lot of extra cabling. You very likely will not have as much cable as I do because the cable to get this to fit in is actually a custom made piece to uh, put in a, a Y adapter so you can get the right lights, amber and white, between sport and classic on a trim piece that's not supposed to be here. So I've got a little bit of extra wiring I built this wiring and uh, I didn't know long, how long it had to be when I built it. So I built in a little bit of extra. <laughs> All right, so take this upper piece, plug it back in so your controls work. Plug only goes one way. That snaps into place right there. 
this trim piece will lock back right into place right there. And again, you've got four bolt, uh, four screws, excuse me, to uh, get it into the right place. I usually will put my screwdriver on the floorboards as much as I can. Again, trying to avoid potentially banging up my seats. It's very easy to put stuff on your seats, but I don't know about you, but I have scratched my seats before with a tool, either in my pocket or one I've put on the seats. Um, I've never punched a hole, thankfully. I will say I've come very close. And I always am just furious with myself for doing so, because I know better. So do try to avoid that. So I've seen me fumbling around with tools sometimes, because I put them on the floorboards to try to keep them out of the way so I don't potentially do some damage there. Okay, so we are almost there. Data cable's in, head unit is back into place, trim is going back into place as it should. The display has the proper screws in place, our GPS antenna is in place and connected. So we should be about there. Okay, so let's put the trim piece back on. I just wanna mention, be careful doing this. As you can see, there are a series of metal clips and that's the only thing that keeps this piece into place are these series of metal clips. I'll even have a clip down here on the end where this metal clip has come off and just the posted remains and the clip is actually st still stuck in the dash over there. So this also can be an opportunity that if you know you have some of these clips that are broken, this could be an opportunity to replace them if you get that, if you get that or if you need that. I recommend it personally. Um, I'm a big fan of trying to make sure everything is always intact always the way I want it to be. Okay, so let's walk our cabling back out for our AC controls. All right. Okay, so everything is in. Now, I would be the first one to argue that when you're dealing with electronics, you might want to pull the uh, negative or ground post off your battery. Um, as you as you would have noticed earlier in the videos that you saw the display come on temporarily as I was plugging in all of the data cables, which means I did not do that. Now, I would probably advise just to be safe that you do do that. I didn't in this case, and um, I would say you probably should. All right, so here we are at the moment of truth. I went and got my key. Uh, because I do try to keep the key far away to try to keep it from turning on or me hitting buttons or anything as, as I go through. Um, but let's see what happens. We get to share this moment. I haven't seen it on yet either. Okay, so hopefully you can see the final display that's all set up. Everything's installed and configured. Um, I will be posting a follow-up on how to configure this so it's all set up properly and I will have that available as soon as possible. But as far as the install is concerned, it's installed and done. The uh, CAN bus controls work, as you can see, as I can go through, well, you can't see my steering wheel, my apologies. But as you go through, you can see that the options on my steering wheel work. I can cycle through options and the touch screen works as well. So all good stuff. and I will post a configuration video of how best to set this up moving forward. Thanks for, thanks for playing along with me. Thanks for uh, working through the install and good luck on doing your install.